Good evening, uh, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, well, good evening uh, from Kiev. Uh, good afternoon if you're uh, uh, on the other side of the ocean. Uh, my name is Markian Belinsky. I'm US Ukraine Foundation Vice President uh, for um, uh, Field Operations. And it's my great pleasure to be able to uh, uh, make a, a, a few brief opening remarks about this aerospace uh, sector cooperation panel. Uh, the aerospace sector, as we know, is synonymous with Ukrainian achievement. Uh, technology like the AN-225 has achieved something of a superstar, superstar status in the field of aviation, while Pubden Mash uh, is a global leader in rocket engine technology and is also a thriving private um, innovation community here in Ukraine. Uh, this can only be good uh, for Ukraine's image and as an advertisement for the sector as a whole. Uh, indeed, aerospace is a legacy sector uh, that can literally launch or propel Ukraine into a position of international prominence. Hence its inclusion in today's discussion on, um, uh, on advocating international uh, or advancing international partnerships uh, through innovation. Uh, we at the Foundation are very pleased that Alex Barth has agreed to chair this uh, uh, panel. Welcome, Alex. Alex uh, is a longtime friend and supporter of the Foundation and indeed of Ukraine. Uh, he's one of those, uh, let's say, like yours truly, one of those folks who uh, came to Ukraine uh, optimistically on a short term assignment. Uh, but it's now, if I understand you correctly, you've been here for 10 years. Uh, yes. working on trying no. to attract investment into the uh, Ukrainian uh, aerospace sector. Uh, a native of New York City, Alex uh, has uh, Wall Street experience. Uh, he is the founder and uh, managing partner of uh, Empire State Capital Partners. And uh, again, thank you, Alex, for your uh, uh, assent to, uh, to chair this panel. And I hand over the proceedings uh, uh, to you to uh, uh, present the uh, panel and to moderate the discussion. Thank you. Thank you, Martin. Thank you very much. I'd like to uh, thank both yourself and the entire team at the US uh, Ukraine Foundation. Uh, this uh, event and this uh, platform specifically, I think is extremely important. I think that uh, it, it's gonna be a key uh, opportunity for uh, the ability to discuss what's probably the most important uh, sector in Ukraine at the most important time uh, and a critical point in the history of this sector. Uh, I'd like to point out that, yes, my, my main background is investments, uh, but uh, all the time that I was here, uh, most of the um, interesting uh, um, companies that uh, I was uh, looking at on the uh, public uh, securities market uh, for instance, uh, such as Motor Siege, uh, which was uh, one of the blue chip stocks on the market here, and I uh, had traded and sold it to many investors. Um, uh, I strongly feel that uh, this is a uh, key uh, uh, financial uh, uh, hub that can be invested in. And uh, the other key point is that recently uh, laws have changed uh, in Ukraine, and uh, uh, one of our speakers uh, will uh, test to that that have opened up the space sector, which was uh, prior uh, forbidden uh, by law to, to have um, uh, official um, private sector cooperation in the space sector. This was completely uh, government only in Ukraine. And because of that, before uh, in Ukraine, unlike the rest of the world, everyone would consider aero and space as two separate sectors. Uh, uh, but uh, now with the uh, change in this um, regulation and the ability to have public-private partnership or uh, strictly even private um, uh, investment into the, into the space sector, uh, I think that we can uh, officially uh, uh, acknowledge that the aerospace sector is open for business in Ukraine, and I'd like to talk about that. I'd like to have Igor Pasternak, also a good friend, uh, both myself and uh, of Ukraine, uh, and um, uh, someone that is born in, in Ukraine, uh, talk now uh, about his uh, uh, experience in the aerospace sector and uh, potential to maybe do some cooperation with Ukraine. Alex, thank you. Thank you for everyone. 
reliability probably with this event starting something very important what really will be lead to some some way of the progress in our cooperation yeah and i grew up in ukraine and um, uh, aerospace engineer who involved uh in airships we started this activity back in ukraine and later on moved to united states uh, where we continue on same what we start doing in ukraine from my standpoint the biggest challenge right now in developing kind of ukrainian aerospace it's need kind of fresh restart it's need to step out from understanding or believe it can be grow on the basis of the soviet legacy or something that was done 20 years ago or 15 years ago i think if ukrainian aerospace industry will introduce introduce the new steps the new ideas in, in anyway and especially uh, new developments such as the green aviation zero emission it will be lead to significant cooperation interest from united states from my colleagues in my personal view uh, i worked in ukraine for the last uh, what five five and a half years it's interesting it's challenging, it's different, but it can be done. Plus, of course, the potential of the country. Alex. Thank, thank you, Igor. Uh, and uh, also, I'm going to put you on the spot today and uh, propose that maybe we even strike the beginnings of a, a public-private uh, partnership between your Aeroscraft and uh, our friends at Pivden Marsh and build uh, a uh, blimp together here in Ukraine. <laughs> So Alex, you the best. You got my yes. Okay, good, good. Now we have to have Dimitro later confirm, and then we have a deal. Uh, Vladimir Rusev, I'd like uh, you to speak, and I'd like to introduce you. Uh, Vladimir is actually quite an amazing person, a good friend of mine, uh, and um, he's probably definitely the youngest uh, uh, person to take the position of uh, the director of the uh, State Space Agency of Ukraine. Uh, he managed to hold on there uh, quite some time, uh, just fresh out, but I think he could uh, tell us the positives uh, and the potential that he's learned there. And also, uh, I would suggest that he uh, uh, speak up about his idea to make a, um, a space accelerator. So please tell us. Alex, Mark, and thanks for the opportunity to talk today. Uh, I agree with Igor on every issue he already pointed out. Of course, all the important reforms and radical transformation should be done for at least 10 years ago, because for now the window of opportunities for Ukrainian aerospace industry is about one, maximum two years. Otherwise we'll see space museums in Ukraine, not space factories. Uh, actually, uh, my chairmanship lasted about 10 months as my first experience in the government sector in Ukraine. It's a quite, a, quite an experience, quite a story for, for another panel discussion, uh, if you would like. But for now, I will say that actually it's not about the technology of Ukraine aerospace industry, the legacy, the heritage, which is quite interesting and for now is pretty compatible uh, on the world market, but more about the standards about the legislation, about the political will and opportunities Ukraine can show as signals to world uh, economy, to the potential investors. I think that the main steps and main reform that should be done right now, the first is corporate reform to give the chance to the enterprises like Yuzhmash to survive, to attract investments, to bring professional leadership and managers and executives to their boards. And secondly, it's a national space program where our government would be not as a main manager, like a quite a Soviet ministry, but to be the main power behind the actual government order for the industry. That's how we see now the Artemis programs works where NASA is the main power to order both services and products from 
private and state enterprises. The same model should work for every space agency in the world, of course, with the top 10 agencies like Ukraine, because despite all the problems we have now, Ukraine is a strong top 10 member in the world aerospace community. So these main two reform, the corporate reform, uh, uh, the national space program where the state ordering products and innovation from uh, private enterprise. And third, I think my best and my personal, it's giving impact for creating private ecosystem. I think Ukraine has so much innovation, so much technology that can be shared by much more than five or 10 state enterprise. That's a big space for the newcomers, for the enthusiasts to come to Ukraine, to set up their new private entities and to shape the new private ecosystem, which then can be integrated to the world supply chain of aerospace companies. And I think we still have chance to make it happen. And that was my personal ambition. And I hope that actually Ukraine will achieve that, but it won't happen without the support from our partners, from United States, from European space community as well. What we managed to do to sign the Artemis agreement to, for Ukraine to become the ninth country as a part of this big inter, national program, I want to say interplanetary, but let's start with international. And I hope that with the support of our partners, we'll have a big success on this way. So thank you for sharing that and for seeking for the new partners. Alex. Uh, thank you, Vladimir. Uh, uh, Vladimir is actually quite shy. He, he didn't even speak about uh, his experience as a serial entrepreneur making what, at least five, five startups before he took uh, the space job. Uh, funny enough, I have an example of uh, a space-related uh, aero turbine uh, product that his 3D printing company made. So there's there's yeah, quite a five years ago. Yes, yes, and actually it's in the expo zone as well. So please do check out some of the startups and technology companies there. So um, right now I'd like to actually uh, present possibly the most important person on our panel today. Uh, because everyone's saying the same thing, that uh, uh, in order for the Ukrainian aerospace sector to not only survive but to flourish, uh, we need to find funding, we need to find it fast, and we need to find quite a lot. Uh, uh, I'm very thankful for my uh, good friend Farhod in Gumbayev, uh, who's the executive director at Oppenheimer from New York City, uh, and uh, who has been kind enough to join us uh, today. But not only that, he's uh, been coming to Ukraine for a couple of years uh, uh, on my um, requests, and he's been nice enough to do so and has been exploring the sector. So, Farhad, please tell us uh, how we can uh, show some money and some love to the sector. Hi, good, good afternoon and uh, good evening, guys. Uh, I'd like to uh, thank uh, US Ukrainian uh, Foundation for inviting me, and also I'd like to thank uh, my friend Alex uh, for having me in this panel. Uh, it's very, very important and highly important and interesting topic uh, for us, for uh, institutional investor side, for uh, Wall Street uh, investors. And uh, I, myself and uh, my colleagues, we actually visited uh, Ukraine uh, over the last uh, couple of years, like a couple of times. And uh, we did some uh, due diligence, some work on uh, preliminary work on uh, institutional investors' appetite uh, for Ukraine's uh, aerospace uh, sector, because uh, uh, traditionally from like, at least like, you know, I can speak of like from uh, credit or bond or like, you know, uh, investors' uh, perspective, uh, Ukraine has been uh, kind of a, you know, very well-known player in the emerging markets, uh, debt capital markets among like SEMI, a group of countries especially uh, uh, in the past like 10 day, ten years or so, there were also like, you know, like negative cases where like uh, several uh, non like uh, government sectors, uh, like agri sector, they had like default history in the past uh, with institutional investors here. But uh, nevertheless, uh, Ukraine received uh, a sovereign, uh, like two update upgrades uh, in the last, uh, two years and uh, as, as far as I know, currently Ukraine's uh, sovereign uh, credit rating is uh, single B with outlook uh, stable. And uh, uh, especially since uh, last uh, fall, since uh, uh, the fall of 2019, there was uh, increased demand in, from institutional investor side uh, 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 towards uh, 
uh, Ukrainian credit or Ukrainian uh, both sovereign as well as uh, corporate sector. And airspace sector has been always, uh, I would say, like uncharted uh, territory, uncharted uh, uh, un unexplored uh, sector and uh, away from like agriculture or financial sector, which is uh, uh, which are traditionally actually explored and uh, a lot of uh, bondholders, institutional investors here in the United States and Europe, uh, they're very much uh, familiar with uh, those sectors. Aerospace is something new and uh, with, uh, again, with the support of, of the government, as well as like, as Alex pointed, uh, like through public private partnership programs, we believe that uh, it could be interesting. And uh, we, uh, in, last year, 2018, we visited, uh, actually, uh, we met with uh, Motorsic, with uh, Antonov, and uh, we did some uh, preliminary uh, due diligence work. And we think like they're pretty much like bankable. And uh, other than, you know, with, like traditional bilateral or uh, multilateral uh, means of ways of financing through uh, uh, IFI institutions or uh, bilateral, like politically leveraged credits or credit facilities by, by other countries. We think that uh, uh, on, on a private sector side, uh, capital markets could be a, a different uh, option and uh, actually uh, another solution where, uh, as you know, uh, capital markets, institutional investors, and I'm talking about like large uh, like non-banking funding uh, uh, sources like huge like pension funds or uh, mutual funds, hedge funds, investment uh, community here in the United States, as well as in, in Europe, uh, they might be interested uh, in the aerospace sector and funding and uh, providing uh, long-term credit and funding solutions to this sector. We have experience in this. We've done some projects uh, in, in Latin America um, and other countries. And uh, that's why I, I can say that uh, we can work uh, in this direction. We can work with the government of Ukraine, with our partners in Ukraine, and uh, um, especially the, the, the projects that we initially considered uh, for financing, uh, Motorsic or Antonov and Yuzhmash uh, could be very, very interesting. And uh, um, we could provide some innovative uh, financing and investment solutions uh, away from, uh, again, like politically leveraged uh, financing by some bilaterals by other countries. Thank you, thank you Farhad. Uh, so uh, you were being quite politically correct, but I, I, I would be quite blunt in saying that uh, we need to bring the uh, other option uh, to, to counter the Chinese invasion, right? So um, uh, one of the things that I'd like to actually point out, and this is what I've been saying and what we have been uh, talking about together uh, uh, with the people at the U US Ukraine Foundation, that uh, since the United States is uh, pushing um, free market capitalism uh, and uh, uh, all of these uh, things, uh, we as Americans, uh, I believe, need to step, uh, step up to the plate and uh, put our money where our mouth is, especially since we print those uh, pieces of paper. So uh, if, if we in, in the US or if, uh, uh, key people in uh, strategic uh, thinking positions uh, see that uh, it is important to safeguard and to, to, to support uh, this aerospace sector um, from going awry to, to any uh, number of nations for that matter, uh, then we need to uh, show our votes with our financing. And, and I think that that's, uh, that's up to us to do, but we do need support both on the Ukrainian side and, and on the US side. So uh, now, best for last, uh, I'd like to introduce uh, Dimitri Nikon, who's the chief uh, economist uh, at uh, Yuzhmash, which is now considered Bivdenmash, and is uh, also one of our uh, favorite uh, uh, and largest um, space companies to, to take a look at. Good afternoon to everybody. Uh, thank you for this opportunity to be here and to express maybe some thoughts about Yuzhmash uh, plans uh, for the future and to express maybe some thoughts about the uh, current situation at the Ukrainian space industry. 
So uh, Yuzhmash currently is a state-owned company, uh, which uh, was created in, on the mid of 2000, uh, or middle of the last century. And we have a very uh, big history and we proud to be a part of the space industry. But actually, I would like to say that the current business environment is completely different than the business environment which was even 10 years ago. So uh, what the challenges we faced and how we are dealing with them. So uh, uh, even uh, you must state own company, uh, it's maybe strange, but uh, we more comfortable in the free market environment. Uh, why is that? Because actually uh, we do not have uh, uh, state orders and we are uh, free uh, market players. The most uh, volume of the uh, orders we we got from the foreign uh, players and uh, mostly we are working for any international commercial programs. In past it was uh, sea launch program, currently we are working for Antares program, uh, we have built some components for the European Vega launcher and so on and so on. And unfortunately uh, I think the first uh, problem for space industry of Ukraine is the absence of the firm government orders. Second problem, uh, Ukraine industry, uh, mostly uh, the state-owned uh, industry, that is why we have some limitation in the getting some uh, some fresh amount to renew our facilities. So uh, it's a problem because we cannot provide some uh, securities for any loans. Uh, in the history of Yuzhmash, we got the only one time, uh, the, I believe the huge current loan. Uh, it, it was more than a hundred million US dollars, but uh, we, uh, we're able to, uh, to take this loan only uh, because we had the government guarantee. So Yuzhmash cannot provide uh, its own assets like the security for any loans. So we believe uh, taking into consideration first and second problems, which I explain, uh, explained previously, uh, I believe the only way for survival of Ukraine space industry uh, make uh, all entity of the Ukrainian space entity uh, like the public uh, partnership. Uh, in other words, to provide the corporate uh, reform. So if it's, I believe, uh, actually we see some steps already made uh, in the legislation of Ukraine. Uh, already in this year, we uh, Ukrainian legislation allow uh, to work on the, in the space industry some private companies, and we already got some contract from them. And we believe that in the next year, uh, Ukrainian government will provide the corporatization for Ukrainian space industry. Uh, if it will uh, occur. Uh, I believe that in the, in the next year we will be available for getting uh, some uh, money from the foreign investors. So actually it's my thoughts. Maybe I will add several words to what Dmitry told you that okay. being a state space enterprise in Ukraine, uh, you are getting the wars from two worlds. Uh, first of all, uh, you don't get any demand by the state. But on the other hand, you can get or attract any investment because you, you are a state-owned enterprise. So what we try to do with our new team to give it like two best from the world. First of all, after the corporate reform, uh, Yuzhmash and other state enterprise will be finally able to attract investment on uh, really compatible terms worldwide. And second, we need, of course, create some demand for 
enterprises inside country for military and both for civil projects. If not, also okay, but then we should understand that the enterprise, the state enterprise should count on themselves and go to the free market to attract investments, to find partnerships. For today, we don't give them any of those. That's why the situation is really hard and tough, uh, despite the fact that we are now in 2020, except all that factors. So the huge marsh is now working hard to create joint ventures. Actually, to create joint ventures right now in Ukraine is also real pain in the ass. But after all, we figured it out. So for now, we have a model for creating joint venture with state enterprise in aerospace in Ukraine, and we are moving forward with that. So we are open for the state enterprise and private partnership and joint ventures in 2021. I hope it will happen because we have so much development in uh, launch vehicles, like full cycle manufacturing of launch vehicles, rocket engines, spacecraft with proved space proven quality and platform that already were flying for tens of years. So actually we need a little bit of support from the government, a little bit of support on the legislation side and we'll, we'll push it forward. And Mitri, thanks for still <laughs> fighting <laughs> this war. Thank you for your words. Okay. Yeah. Okay, okay. Uh, th th thank you, Dimitra, and, and thank you, Vladimir, for, for that commentary. I, I think that actually it's a blessing in disguise because now uh, uh, with all of the knowledge that you picked up uh, uh, as, as a free as a free man uh, uh, back in, uh, in our private sector, you could maybe help uh, more, more than from the inside. And uh, maybe next year we could get a lot done um, with your help on this. I, I'd like to go back around one more time and then get some questions. Um, uh, Igor, do you have any uh, additional thoughts uh, from what you've heard that you'd like to add? Yes, I, mean, I absolutely agree with everything. And from my experience and experience of everyone at this panel, airplanes, rockets, airships, they're flying not necessarily because of aerodynamic or flow of physics, they're flying because of money and political support. And the question number one, perhaps needs to be asking if Ukrainian government willing to stay behind the, of the Ukrainian aerospace industry. Without this, uh, I don't believe if we can see significant progress in development of, of this industry in Ukraine. But again, the support must be on the most highest level. It's not about creating some uh, the element or in the system who theoretically need to provide some kind of support. No, it's never worked. Not in the United States, not in Soviet Union, never, 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 anywhere in the world. The government needs to identify this in industry as strategic and back it up. I mean, if you look at the experience um, use much, when you were saying uh, people asking for government guarantee is one of the example, because aerospace very complicated business and any investor or partner will always look for the security and return on investment and again it's yeah i feel in some time uh, we need the orders perhaps it's not necessary perhaps it's secondary perhaps the first one is the government support ability to restructure and restructure not only as a corporation restructure yours technical and manufacturing capabilities and become more competitive. And of course, I believe in this restructure, uh, the American companies will be very appreciated if you invite us to participate. And after this, with more kind of competitive advantage to move to the aggressively on the market. Because if continuum just going after orders, and presenting with the, I don't want to use word the cheapest one, I always prefer word the cost effective one, but sometimes I'm hearing from Ukrainian partners the word the cheapest one. It's always will be pushing down. It needs realization, it needs revolution, not the evolution. 
thank you, thank you, Igor. That those are very, very pointed words. And uh, regarding uh, uh, what uh, uh, Dimitro said uh, uh, about the uh, government guarantees, uh, I, I've been here for quite some time, and I find it very uh, uh, amusing that over the the years that I've been here, there's been government guarantees to build uh, uh, football stadiums for the soccer tournaments. There's been government guarantees in large amounts to build roads that need to be uh, rebuilt every second year. There's been guarantees on all sorts of things. Uh, uh, the, uh, the most important sector uh, to keep um, Ukraine in a very exclusive club of maybe a handful of nations that have full scope uh, uh, aerospace capabilities. I, I, I find that there's, there's very few nations um, that have uh, such uh, capacity uh, from start to finish, uh, and including being able to, to launch rockets into space. Um, I think that uh, someone in the government, and we're very hopeful to see uh, the fact that there's been a ministry uh, and a, a, a directive established to consolidate uh, strategic industries and, and uh, uh, we hope that that will be the start of uh, maybe some uh, order and uh, um, look forward in, in to, into this. Uh, but uh, I'd like to also say to Dimitri and have maybe Farhod um, uh, confirm this, that uh, a proper government uh, uh, corporation, uh, for instance, like Antonov that's already corporatized or um, Ukrainian railways uh, that already went through the process, uh, can merit uh, uh, raising capital without explicit government guarantees. Now, you might need the government guarantee just for the first uh, issuance, but if, uh, if a government corporation uh, is uh, um, uh, properly run in a Western uh, corporate governance standards and, and has the uh, IFRS uh, audits and the financials to merit it, it can raise its own money without uh, the government anymore. Uh, so uh, could you confirm uh, some of these thoughts, uh, Farhad? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the, the, the state and or the government guarantees in, in the beginning would be of paramount importance. Although I understand uh, it's a sensitive uh, subject for the Ministry of Finance and, and the government of Ukraine because any uh, government guarantee actually brings like additional uh, debt burden and there are like covenants, I understand, like, you know, probably imposed by IMF or World Bank, but this strategic sector, aerospace sector, cannot uh, like develop and like you know move forward from uh, uh, without uh, initial state support. And uh, as you said, like you know the government guarantee and the support from uh, the the government uh, of Ukraine uh, would be uh, essentially uh, like you know uh, one one of the key requirements, at least from the. Uh, investors uh, perspective from institutional investors perspective and and then down the road uh, uh, the, the the corporation or the agency can be on its own uh, you know feet and uh, and then further like bringing uh, th this initial funding that we may help with uh, would, would help the, the the whole overall sector you know to reform and uh, to uh, bring like like transparency accountability and on top of like just uh, uh, writing a blank check or like you know providing uh, like some grants or like free money that is usually like you know uh, welcomed by the by the by the governments, uh, going like to investor side like going to uh, capital markets would also bring additional benefits by uh, first of all like again like bringing transparency. Uh, it would also uh, bring a. Uh, Credit ratings would arrange the credit ratings for the for the company or for the corporation, and then there would be a, a strategic communications and relationship between global and Western institutional funds and the sector. And the global institutional funds uh, would be always on, uh, on 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 standby whenever the sector needs additional capitalization, additional uh, contribution of. Uh, of, of capital, whether it's debt or equity. The, the first phase, it could be in the form of debt, but as you know, uh, equity follows that. So first uh, you establish a relationship with uh, uh, credit investors and the very same uh, funds uh, that provide credit would one day may actually become a shareholder, equity holder. So that's why 
that are like ultimate uh, like uh, benefits of uh, starting a relationship with capital markets. Um, so, but but I agree that the government, the state support uh, would be uh, uh, of uh, of huge importance. Thank you, thank you, Farhad. And and uh, I smiled at your equity question because I know that uh, uh, given given the uh, level of uh, 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 fear and bureaucracy in the sector, uh, we'll, we'll be we'll be glad to take the debt offerings first and talk about the IPO on the Nasdaq Stock Exchange maybe three to five years down. Um, but uh, but in all honesty, one of the key benefits of um, uh, even going to public debt markets is that once you go through uh, that path, uh, uh, it forces the company to basically uh, become in line with global standards, not, uh, and we spoke about this with many people uh, here, including Transparency International openly, that it's hard to ask Ukraine to, to fight corruption and to uh, be transparent and to turn on uh, supervisory boards and corporate governance and, and uh, do audits. Uh, this is done in return for money. Uh, so my argument is that uh, if we're talking about capitalism instead of communism, uh, we should put uh, money on the table uh, with terms attached to that money that will actually make it a carrot and, and stick rather than just a stick. Uh, so I think that uh, Dimitro might agree that uh, um, not just his uh, organization, but any uh, large um, uh, 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 government uh, company in Ukraine uh, will probably be much more excited uh, to uh, start uh, uh, acting and, and uh, uh, being like Western um, uh, corporations uh, if, uh, if there's uh, an offer of money on the table in return for all of this uh, hard work that, that additionally needed. Uh, yes. uh, uh, Vlad, uh, let's have a word from you, Dimitra, and then get some questions from the audience. Yeah, actually, I want to take my chance to talk as we're talking here about Ukraine and the United States, about relationship and potential friendship in aerospace, because you mentioned all the details on the corporate reform, all the bullshit, everything needs to be done, agree 100%. But actually, we are here like a small team in Ukraine who want to provide the reforms, actually having pressure from all the sides. And that's why where I can ask for some support from the United States. I was considered the first like liberal and pro-American head of the state agency. And that's why I haven't received any support from the United States, but that's okay. What I want to ask for actually, for signals, the signals which I can transfer to the government, to the president, to the prime minister, because it's really important here that it's not only my fight, I'm fighting with huge marsh and other state enterprise, but it's something we are the part of a big movement where we can integrate Ukrainian technology and Ukrainian industry to the world supply chains, confirming that we're using the same set of rules, the same standard, the same corporate reform we want to implement in the New Year's future. Because actually the Twitter is the only support source for the Ukraine aerospace industry right now from NASA and our other partners. What I want to do maybe to uh, ask for some process of integration on the level of international agreements for example, we ran out of our agreement, 10 years agreement for space cooperation between Ukraine and United States. For 10 months, I tried to renew it. Uh, unfortunately, it still didn't happen. I think it would be a really important step forward to renew this agreement, to bring new questions, new issues we're facing right now to the table in the context of big Artemis program, Ukrainian corporate reform, the startups ecosystem we're building. So I think it should be good to feel this kind of a movement from both sides, not only from the Ukraine, but also from the United States. And I think it will be valuable. You cannot understand how valuable it can be. Uh, per perfectly, perfectly put, uh, Vladimir. Uh, I think that once we're done with this forum, we will need to uh, 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 have a, 
uh, a fair and uh, direct discussion for asking for help from our organizers. I think that uh, both Robert and Nadia McConnell would be the uh, the perfect uh, uh, flag bearers to to help uh, in Washington to, to to get some attention. Uh, they they have been uh, doing uh, so uh, greatly, actually being the the best voice uh, for the bilateral Ukraine. Uh, U.S. Uh, discussions, and I think that re-signing this agreement um, you know, in space cooperation that was allowed to lapse is quite uh, quite important. And uh, in terms of signals, I think that this very um, forum and this panel, which which will be uh, available afterwards to share with anyone that that hasn't seen it yet, is is a great uh, signal because we have. Uh, uh, our friend uh, Igor Pasternak uh, from the private sector, uh, U.S. Uh, uh, aerospace company, uh, here willing and able to uh, uh, work. Igor with... will spread the word. I know. Thank Not you. Spread the word. He he's here willing to do a joint venture. We would sign a memorandum if we could uh, uh, sign here virtually. Uh, and then uh, Farhod uh, from Oppenheimer is willing to give money. So we have everything. We have. Uh, 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 private public uh, sector uh, joint venture partner. We have uh, money on the table from Wall Street. Uh, we have Vladimir confirming what's needed to be done. We have Dimitro here. Uh, Dimitro, pre please tell us. Uh, are I you still happy? have some money to work for government for the next year if needed. So you have me and your team, guys. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, so Dimitro, will, will will you take will you take some money and some partners here? What do you say? Yes, yeah, sure. We would be glad uh, to. We would be glad to receive some investment from uh, the partners and to renew our capacity and create some new ideas and to realize them in, in reality. Farhad, we have a new five years financial model with good return on investment plan. So just be ready. Oh uh, yeah, also. Sounds like a plan. Well, perfect. I mean, we're we're dealing right on the spot here. Uh, so let's let's have some Q and A. Uh, I have uh, uh, some questions for the audience, uh, saying where is their place for micro and small businesses in the space industry in in Ukraine? Uh, and uh, I think uh, uh, Vladimir, uh, you are actually specifically working on uh, on on your Yangel uh, project, which might be perfect to answer that question. Can you discuss about how? Uh, small and uh, medium entrepreneurs can uh, get into space? Yeah, actually, as being myself as a small and medium entrepreneur for the whole of my life, I think that's something that can change the situation in Ukraine for the new aerospace industry dramatically. Uh, I've been a part of several accelerations for my different companies like Techstars, and I see what value they can bring to the table on the early stage, on the level of seed funding, uh, attracting the mentors, the really great partnership that cannot be found by founders themselves. That's why we started earlier this year, the pre-acceleration program, like super early a level for the teams to figure out what their business models are, to create kind of a pitch uh, so they can pitch their investors, potential investors. So. Closer to the end of the year, we were on our schedule to launch the acceleration program, choosing about five, 10 startups with getting them seed funding under $1,000 and partnership and understanding of the global supply chain and how they can be integrated to these projects. Unfortunately, we need to move it to the beginning of the next year. I hope the situation will be better so we can have kind of a real offline acceleration program because doing everything online is really a hard task and making things really complicated for the aerospace industry. We cannot use our infrastructure. We cannot use our mentors at the factories, at the locations. So I hope uh, we will be able to do it maybe February, March. That's why I want to welcome uh, potential partners and investors to this acceleration program. It would be first of this kind in Ukraine and maybe the post-Soviet aerospace industry. That's why I think we can shape a community of about 10 companies in the next two years, which will be the foundation for the private ecosystem. And we as a state will give the impact on developing of this ecosystem and giving a signal to our partners that it's a safe a uh, place to come, that it's really a good promise for return on their investment, and that's a good place to be for the aerospace development. So I think I've covered it. 
So I would like to add some some words uh, to answer the questions. Uh, actually, regarding the opportunity for some private uh, entrepreneurs, so Yuzhmash has some experience to work with the several startups, and uh, maybe a couple or three years ago, uh, we some star startups uh, uh, found Yuzhmash. Uh, as uh, to work with huge much like with technological lab. So now we are working with the three startups and we are trying to help them to realize a, their some projects. So it's one of the way how huge much can uh, help some. And maybe it will sound mind blowing and really super innovative, but now Yuzhmark is ready to be the co-founder on different joint ventures on the startups. So that's something maybe way ahead of even what's been done in North of Grumman or some really cool mm -hmm. US corporations. Uh, but that's uh, here we are. And I think that Yuzhmark already became a co-founder in several joint ventures. And I think this model of public private partnership is something to share with our partners. Uh, so we are open to this kind of uh, joint ventures. And I think in the nearest future, we can set up several focused on launch vehicles, rocket engines, maybe some new technology for the spacecraft now being developed on Yuzhmash. Well, that, that's very interesting news. I think that we definitely also need to uh, work on an effort to promote uh, this information uh, both here and abroad. Uh, uh, if, if, if it's not confidential, we should probably then let everyone know about all of these uh, new JVs. I just sent a signal to Igor. He will should think about it. <laughs> OK, OK. Yeah, Igor's, Igor's thinking. Well, I mean, we'll, we'll talk about that. If it's 50-50 or 49-51, we've got to just discuss the, the, the deal terms, right? Um, what, one of the key things actually um, is that there's a lot of physical uh, or hardware um, uh, factories, um, metal, let's call it, uh, uh, in the, the sector here, not just uh, in Pivden Marsh, but, but there's multitude of different um, uh, companies, uh, both in uh, uh, aero and space, uh, on the balance sheet. And a lot, it's very underutilized. And I think that one of the key uh, angles is to, to invite people to come and to find what's not being used, whether it's uh, 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 part of the factory or some equipment that's, uh, that's not uh, being put to use and not being monetized, and, and start to monetize as much as possible, both hardware and also uh, the uh, probably uh, limitless uh, uh, pages of IP uh, maybe even there's cold fusion uh, formula somewhere in the basement, but uh, well, one of the uh, ideas was to actually digitize uh, and uh, and do an inventorization of both uh, um, uh, intellectual property uh, and uh, hardware and see uh, how the private sector, uh, both here and internationally, can uh, help monetize that. Um, we have uh, uh, another question here. Uh, so, Dale, Dale from Texas, uh, uh, would you would you like to come and and uh, come into Ukraine and also uh, participate? Um, okay. So, and then the human capital. Actually, that's uh, another question came in. That's the most important thing. Uh, if there's a lot of um, engineers, scientists, uh, and uh, uh, professionals in the sector. One of the biggest risks, uh, if this sector is not uh, uh, paid attention to, invested in, is that these people uh, need to feed their families. Uh, uh, some of them uh, are, are so smart they could probably make a nuclear weapon in their backyard. So they need to be uh, uh, they need to be fed. They need to be invested in. Uh, so they don't fly off to North Korea uh, or Iran. So I think that uh, the human capital uh, part here is more important than uh, than the billions of dollars of hardware laying around. Um, is there uh, any other questions? We have about 10 minutes left. Um, uh, well, what is the question about human resources? Ah, what is the most important uh, for you existing uh, capacity or human capital? So uh, someone asked if, if it's the hardware or the uh, human aspect that's more important. Uh, I think that the human uh, capital is most important because once they're gone. As always, as always, it's both. It's both. It's both. 
Oh, but I am more on the Alex side. Yes. From because our standpoint, the humans is number one because they create. I won't open the secret to you that it's already happening that people are leaving the state enterprises, going to some other countries where they can find the good salaries. And not only salaries, but actually the way to make something really valuable for themselves because there's actually a tradition in this history to be involved in something important. And the lack of this self-importance in your own country that hurts. And unfortunately, we're seeing thousands of people leaving uh, and we're here to stop this. Uh, not, not an easy way to stop it, but we already covered it, how we can do that. But yeah. Now it's time to do that, actually. Yes. Oh, well, I need to admit, I am the guilty person here. Because ah, yes. of the Ukrainian aerospace engineer hey. working for us. <laughs> this, yeah, but at least you went to the United States. You didn't go to Iran or, or North Korea, so that's good. <laughs> So, um, so I think that uh, um, we, can, unless someone else has uh, any questions, uh, Farhad, uh, Dimitro, any any comments from you guys to finish up? Uh, I, I'd like to I'd like to then take an opportunity to uh, to give a um, uh, uh, moments of uh, uh, information about a very dear uh, aerospace company of mine that, for esoteric reasons. Uh, uh, is not on our panel, but uh, you know, U Ukraine is a, is a very esoteric place sometimes. Uh, but uh, they are in the expo zone. Uh, this is by far my most favorite uh, private sector uh, aerospace company. Uh, I have traded the stock. I have uh, brought investors uh, throughout the last ten years uh, to the factory. Uh, it's called Motor Siege. Uh, it is a um, uh, uh, aerospace uh, uh, engine producer, specifically helicopter engines, uh, uh, aviation engines, and even uh, for drones or, or single-use uh, um, pilotless uh, uh, vehicles, as they would say. Uh, and uh, this company uh, was in a very interesting predicament because they were uh, selling most of their product to, uh, to Russia. So once the um, political climate changed after uh, Maidan and after the, um, the war in, in uh, Donbass, uh, there was no longer, uh, obviously, the ability to sell into the main market. Uh, so what Motor Siege did was uh, they created their own helicopter, uh, which is a lot easier than uh, creating your own engine. Uh, as many would say, the engine is the most difficult part. So they have uh, created a fully uh, Ukrainian uh, helicopter start to finish on the back of their great engine technology, the uh, MSB-2 and MSB-8. Uh, they want to find new markets for these uh, helicopters. Uh, and I think that uh, uh, although it would be great if we could have uh, some uh, Western investors uh, come in and uh, um, invest into the uh, company. More important than that, uh, the company itself has said that the the main thing that they're looking for is to find partners that will guarantee uh, uh, the the work of the company. Uh, uh, o o about half of the people in the city of Zaporozhye either directly work or or indirectly are linked to this uh, company. It's uh, kind of like a Detroit uh, situation. Uh, they're they are a city forming uh, entity. Uh, and um, I think that the best way that uh, the U.S. can support a low-hanging fruit is to go buy some helicopters. Uh, so please check them in the expo booth and uh, maybe we'll uh, sell some aviation. Uh, so thank you very much uh, to all. Uh, we, uh, I don't see any other questions. Uh, last call, uh, questions from the audience. Uh, if not, then, uh, then let's... Uh, uh, let's uh, please uh, use this moment to say that uh, this panel should not be a one-off. Uh, we should take all the people that participated today and any other um, uh, professionals, both government, private sector, uh, uh, both in Ukraine and in the U.S. and globally, uh, to form a, a constant uh, a group of sorts. Uh, that uh, we could do with the help of the U.S.-Ukraine Foundation to continually have these conversations both in a private and public uh, platform. And the, the more uh, open discussion that is had, the faster we will all uh, come to, uh, to bringing up the sector and not letting it um, uh, fall apart. Uh, as Vladimir said, we have one or two years, I think. Uh, so thank you all for, for joining us. And, and this is the signal. 
Uh, I hope that uh, our president here is watching as well. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Bye bye. Refer Yuzmash to Motorsich. That's my last last word. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you so much, gentlemen. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Bye bye. bye, -bye.